In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create an animation of an object following a curve. So I have this low poly spaceship here that I'll be using as an example. So I'll just move this out of the way and I'll go to the add menu. I'll go here to curve and I'm just gonna add the default BZA curve. So we'll hit tab to go into edit mode and I can go to top view and I can just select the curve handles and just move the curve handles around and I can scale the curve handles and rotate them. I can also hit E to extrude out the curve handles. If you hit the T key to open up the side panel, you can also go right down here to the draw feature, make sure you're in edit mode of the curve and then you can also draw out a curve if you want to. But I'm gonna click back here to go to the select box tool and just close the side panel. So once you've created the curve, you can go back into object mode. And then what you wanna do is take the object, which is gonna follow the curve, and you wanna bring it back to the default position. So you wanna bring it into the center of the world. So if I just select the object and hit Alt G, that's gonna clear the locations. So now you can see it's back to the center because the origin point is now there in the center of the world. And it might also be a good idea to hit Alt R to clear any rotations and Alt S to clear any scale values. So now with the object selected, we're gonna click here on the constraint properties we're going to click on add object constraint and we're going to add follow path now here on the target this is the path that we want it to follow so we'll click on the eyedropper and choose the path or just click on here on the drop down and choose the curve now if I just delete the target, let's just move this over right here so it's not in the center. Well, if I were to now click on the target and then choose the curve, you can see there's gonna be an offset here. So it's offset from the curve, so that's why I had to put this in the very center of the world. So just hit Alt-G to bring it back to the center of the world, and now you can see it's in the center there of where the curve is. Now, if I hit the space bar to play the animation, you can see it's not moving. So to actually animate this, we wanna click on the animate path button. First though, there is this fixed position. So if I check mark the fixed position, it's going to just give us a value that we can use to just keep at one point. So I can now take this offset factor and I can just drag this around and you can see I just can put it at a specific point. So you could use the fixed position to animate it. So for example, if I have the timeline here, I could hover my mouse over the offset factor and hit the I key, then I can drag the timeline over here, then I can drag the offset factor like this far, and then hit the I key to inset a keyframe. So now if I go back and forth and play this, you can see we're animating that curve. What I'm going to do though is just hit Control Z though to undo those keyframes. Another thing I can do is I can click on this curve radius. So if I turn this on, then the object is going to be scaled up larger if the curve handles are larger. So if I go into edit mode and then select this curve handle, I can hit Alt S to scale up the curve handle. You can't really see the size of it. That's because there is an actual visual geometry. But if I just like select this curve handle and hit Alt S, you can see because this curve handle is gonna be larger, it's going to be bigger. So now if I click back on the spaceship here, I can just change the offset factor. And you can see if the curve handle is larger, the spaceship is gonna be larger. But then if I like select the end point here and hit Alt S and make this one really small, click back on the spaceship, you can see when it gets to the end, the spaceship is gonna be really small. So you can use that if you want to, to change the size of the spaceship. But I'm not gonna use the curve radius in this example, and I'm also not gonna use the fixed position. So a very easy way to animate this is to just click on the animate path button. So this is automatically gonna animate the spaceship. So now if I hit the space bar to play, you can see the object is just moving along the curve. Now, what if you want the object to rotate while it's moving around the curve? Because you can see the curve here rotates around. Well, to do this, you can click on this follow curve button. So if you click on that, now you can see as I play this, the spaceship is actually rotating along. It's actually rotating with the curve. However, it's rotating in the wrong direction. So what I wanna do is make it so it's pointing towards where the curve is rotating. So to do this, you can change this forward axis. So you can just click through these and change the forward axis until you find one that looks good. So for this specific example, I found that I need to turn the forward axis to Z and the up axis to Y. And now when I play this, you can see the spaceship is rotating and moving and pointing in the direction that it's going. Now the default animation may not be the animation that you want. You might want the animation to be faster or slower or even have it speed up and slow down during the animation. So to do this, what we wanna do is click here on the curve and we wanna click here to go to the object data properties of the curve. And I'm gonna click on this path animation. So just open this up and you can see there is, is this evaluation time and you can see Blender already animated on default because we clicked on that animate path button. So there is a frames here. So if I just drag up the amount of frames, that's gonna make it longer. 
So whatever this frames value is, that's gonna be the end of the animation. So if I make it like 500, now you can see as I go through this, it's not going to get to the very end of the curve until frame 500. However, you can animate this manually. So if I just right click here on the evaluation time, I can click on clear keyframes. So I can just move to any spot in the timeline and I can hover my mouse over the value and hit the I key to inset a keyframe. Then I can drag to another spot in the timeline. I can turn up the evaluation time and then hit the I key again with my mouse hovered over that keyframe. So now if I just drag the keyframes around here on the timeline, I can change the speed of it. So I can make these keyframes really close to each other so the spaceship starts out fast. And then if I drag this farther away, the spaceship is gonna slow down. So you can manually animate the keyframes with that evaluation time. Now if you just have two keyframes, you can see when I play this, it starts to speed up and gets faster and faster. And at the end, it kind of slows down. But if you want to play at a consistent speed, you can hit the A key in the timeline to select all the keyframes and hit the T key and then you can choose the linear. So if I choose linear now as I play this you can see the spaceship is going to move at a consistent speed throughout the entire animation. Now what you can also do is open up the graph editor so you have more customizable control over the animation. So if I click here on the corner and drag out to split the window I can click here to change the editor type and we'll change this to the graph editor. And let's just close these side panels. So I'll hold down the control key and middle click and drag out. And you can see here is the keyframes that we've added. So I I can kind of select the keyframes, I can drag them around. I can also select the keyframes and hit the T key, and I can change the interpolation back to Bezier. I could also hit the I button with my mouse hovered over the evaluation time to add another keyframe. And so now I can just kind of play around with the keyframes. I can have it speed up and slow down. So with the graph editor, you have this back and forth here, which is the timeline. And then we have this up and down, which is the value. So as it goes along the time, if this red line goes up higher, that is gonna add more value. And if you want to learn more about the graph editor, I do have a graph editor for beginners tutorial. So you can check out that video with the link in the description if you're interested and learn more about the graph editor. So let's just click here and then drag over and then let go to close the graph editor. Now let's say that you've already set up the curve, but it's going in the wrong direction. Well, you can easily fix this by just hitting tab to go into edit mode. You can select all the curve handles by hitting A, and then you can click on segments and you can click on switch direction. This way, the curve handles haven't actually moved, but you can see now the spaceship is going in the opposite direction. So it starts out on this side and it will end over at the other side. Now another really cool thing you could do is use this as a camera rig to animate a camera moving through a scene. So if I just go to the add menu, let's just add a camera and I'll just delete the rocket. So if I select the camera now, we can just do the same exact thing. So on the constraints, add object constraint, we're gonna add follow path, and then we'll click on the eyedropper and choose the curve. And then I just need to hit Alt G to clear the transforms. So now as I play this, you can see the camera's moving along the scene. So then to rotate the camera, you could either choose the follow curve and you can make the camera rotate along with the curve. You can also kind of just rotate it manually. You could also add keyframes. So as you're rotating the camera kind of up and down, you could add keyframes and that way you can make the camera look around in your scene. So this would be a cool way to animate the camera flying through a 3D scene. So that's how you can animate an object following a curve in Blender. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to watch more of my Blender quick tips, I also have a quick tips tutorial playlist. So I'll have a link to that in the description and right up there on the end screen. And if you'd like to help support the channel, a great way to do that is by joining my Patreon page where you can get access to lots of Blender content while supporting the channel monthly. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.